Today we're going to do the coolest reaction ever. We're going to react the acid of bromine and sodium phosphate to create carbon dioxide, which as we know is the same stuff that we breathe out and that your car produces in combustion. But remember, safety first. Hydrobromic acid is, well, an acid. Also, when evaporating water from a sample, make sure you use a double boiler. Otherwise, hot salts may spatter. How hot can salt get? Well, hot enough to light my fire. Okay, let's get started. Let's do some dishes. Clean your casserole dish, which we're actually just going to use this evaporating dish, with soap and water. One more time. Rinse with distilled water and a paper towel. On a wire gauze, heat the casserole on low flame until it is completely dry. Cool, weigh, and repeat the process to ensure dryness. To our dry casserole, we will add sodium carbonate, approximately one gram. Moisten the sodium carbonate with a little bit of water. Your mixture may begin to fizz so cover it with a watch glass to avoid losing any, any substance. Can you hear it fizzing? Now we're going to add approximately two drops of methyl red to our mixture. Methyl red is yellow at pHs of above about six and turns red at pHs below four or below five. So what I've got here is hydrobromic acid so it's a very strong acid, and all three of these are mixed with water, which as we know is around pH 7. Uh, in Charleston, it's around pH 8. So that's why we get a yellowish color. If I add one drop of this hydrobromic acid, you'll notice a violent transition into a more reddish color. Methyl red is an indicator that changes color as the acidity of the solution changes. If it's yellow, it's more basic. If it's red, it's a little acidic. Cover the casserole to catch any material that may spatter. Using an eyedropper, we're going to add the hydrobromic acid through the spout. Leave the watch glass on to catch any spattering that occurs. Our mixture will begin to fizz as the sodium carbonate is released as CO2 in this reaction. The carbon dioxide will actually give a false reading of pH since CO2 makes water more acidic via this reaction. So we don't want to use all of our hydrobromic acid because of this false reading. So retain approximately one milliliter of your acid. Notice that the mixture has returned to the yellow color. That is because all the CO2 has now left the mixture leaving this as a true pH reading. As we add more hydrobromic acid, we expect it to turn back to red. Rinse any spattering that may have occurred into your casserole dish. Move your casserole on top of your steam bath, but do not boil the water. We just need a lower heat transfer to our casserole dish. This heating will drive off any CO2 left in our mixture out of the reaction. Because we are removing CO2, this will make the mixture turn back to yellow as it releases that acidity from the CO2. Notice our mixture changing colors. Temporarily remove heat from your bath and allow it to cool to add hydrobromic acid. If we did our calculations correctly, our mixture should turn into a pale red color. Adding any more hydrobromic acid will bring the acidity down, therefore turning a redder color yet. Then evaporate the water in the casserole slowly. Move the casserole on top of your steam bath, which we began heating a little while back, remember? When evaporating water from a sample, a double boiler needs to be used. Otherwise, hot salts may spatter. <laughs> remember to wear your glasses this lab.